Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new podcast presented by the Student Artists Network, Behind the Counters, a wellness talk show for pharmacy workers and students. The goal of the podcast is to raise mental health awareness within the pharmacy realm, and I'm very, very excited to launch this, uh, this great show at this point because while, the clo- uh, while we are at the closing chapter of the pandemic itself, we should ask ourselves, have we taken time for ourselves to heal our well-being as frontline healthcare work- workers? Have we considered the well-being of our patients when we see them day-to-day in our services? And most importantly, what are things we could do to deal with burnout and stress in pharmacy? I know, I think, tr- I truly believe that there is a presenting questions that we should address as a field, and I hope this creation of the podcast will help with them. And the news don't lie. Multiple studies, both before, during, and after the pandemic, shows an alarming trend of burnout in pharmacy and pharmacy school settings. These studies have all indicated that something needs to be done to help pharmacists, technicians, clerks, students, or other workers in pharmacy in dealing with this big issue. Through this podcast, we aim to that our listeners will learn to recognize, address, and reduce the load that we as healthcare providers have in mental wellness. Before officially starting though, however, I would just like to let everyone know that this podcast is intended to use as a reference only. If you're currently experiencing a mental health crisis, please seek professional help immediately, and links are down below in the resources for and hotlines in every episode. All right, without further ado, in our first episode, we'll start off with a small discussion of, uh, about addressing wellness in pharmacy school. Joining us today is Shanika, one of our student producers here at the Student Artists Network, as well as a P3 at Roseman University. Uh, thanks, Shanika, for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very glad to be here. Thanks. Um, let's get this started. All right. So first of all, let's um, kind of first address, like, where are you at in your current curriculum in pharmacy school and um what else are you dealing with in life? So, so far I'm in like the resting phase of, um, of my P2 year. I will technically be a P3 until August. Um, and so right now I'm just in the phase of just trying to prepare myself mentally and physically um, to go ahead and go through with my P3 year. Um, my P3 year is going to be very hectic. Um, since I'm at Rosemary University, it's a three-year program. Um, so it's going to consist of me going to places like the Ambulance Worry Care. Um, I also got uh, my rotations at um, UMC in Las Vegas, um, St. Rose Hospital, the VA Hospital, um, and uh, a compounding pharmacy, which is pretty exciting. So I guess it tastes like every you know, like go through that, de- go down every avenue of pharmacy that there is. Of course, there's way more like um, there's nuclear pharmacy and those hours are really crazy and everything. But I, I did get the ones that I picked. For instance, I did pick the VA and I picked UMC and at UMC, I'll be doing ne- the neonatal ICU, which I'm super excited about. Um, So that's, that's pretty much what I have going on for me right now. And yeah, I'm just really excited about that. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm glad that you got all the um, rotations that you wanted. Um, I mean, looking at that, like, what are some of your stressors in school or even outside of school settings? So some of my stressors um, outside of school is, I would say, hmm, just um, staying positive and, and making and just reassuring yourself that what you're going through, everyone else is also going through it. Um, but however, everyone deals with it in different ways, you know, and so you just have to find your way um, that helps you get through it. A safe way, of course, like, you know, going for a run or something. Right now, my my way of dealing with stress is working out. I work out at least 45 minutes in the morning. Yeah, I have to wake up really early to do it, but I do it and it gets like all of the anxiety and all of the anxiousness out before I go in to take an exam or before I go into class because pharmacy school can be very stressful, especially when you're in an accelerated program that requires you to get 90% on every exam. And so, you know, that's, that's how I deal with that outside of school. 
Ah, so I guess I think that's very relatable in terms of like, um, you know, especially you currently in the three year program, you know, uh, being able to still manage your lifestyle that you want at the same time, um, being in school. How was it like? Was this something that's like it needed like your time during your P one year to first kind of like adjust it? P one year, yes, it was a lot of adjustment. It it just didn't like happen naturally. P one year, I did struggle a lot mentally. I would say, um, I was still adjusting mentally to the curriculum, um, because it was it's so fast paced, you know, and you have to learn like over a thousand slides. And the, t- and the test is only 60 questions. And so you're panicking. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's over a thousand slides. It's 60 questions. Where are those questions going to come from? It could come from, they could pull from anywhere, you know? And um, so uh, P1 year, I did struggle a lot mentally. Um, luckily now our university has a mental health um, site for us to go to. They just started this year and it's free for all the students. Um, so that way we could um, talk to um, uh was it um therapist and everything just to help us get back on track and and you know have someone to talk to while we're going through it and we get to pick our own therapist that's the great part too um so it it definitely it definitely was an adjustment and then going on to my p2 year i felt like i was more mentally prepared p2 year was a whole different ball game because p1 year we just it was basically undergrad on steroids so we're learning the biochemistry, the um, physiological parts of the human body. Um, we use, we're still learning some organic chemistry. And it was like, oh, my gosh, it's still here. You're still going to be learning it. And then, But then P2 year is when we actually start doing more clinical stuff. So we had uh, we were practicing more cases. We we have to now understand how how those medications are used for what disease states and so it was definitely a complete change. They say you have two different types of students. You have students who excel P1 year and students who excel P2 year, you know? And I feel like my strength was definitely P2 year. So, you know, it, it depends on each student on how they go about, you know, how they how they manage to overcome each year. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Like, I think I myself is probably like someone who like likes to like, learn more about clinical stuff and apply that knowledge, you know. Uh, speaking about what you just covered before, saying like how schools are starting to recognize these um, uh, or being aware of mental health challenges within uh, pharmacy school settings, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a general trend of like how maybe prior researchers and studies have supported that, you know, there is a struggle among pharmacy school students. Um, there is a struggle in pharmacy in general to maybe like like activate or like help them realize that you know this is very important to make sure that our students here are um, treated well or like they're treated as people who need to have have basic needs and I think that's I think that's very important uh, do you agree with that I 100% agree with that because each student struggles you know, with their own mental issues, you know, solo. And some of us are more verbal about it. And some of us just keep it bottled in um, because we feel like, you know, we don't want to seem like we're a burden or that, you know, no one's going to care. Why would they care about that? And, you know, and it's, and, and that's okay. You know, as long as you seek some type of help, your, your help doesn't have to be broadcasted to the whole, for the whole world to know, you can, you can do it privately. And, you know, that's, that's something that, I was very private about my mental issues. I shared with a couple of friends um, and, you know, but I, de- I dealt with mine, like talking to my husband who also luckily went through the same program. So I had someone to relate to and, you know, he handled his differently than mine because he was mentally, I would say, in my opinion, mentally way more mentally stronger than I was because he just, he's one of those people that could read something one time and it's like, it just sticks. You know, and for me, I was like, I had to sit there in a silence room and read it about 10 times and then read it again. And and sometimes it doesn't click. And then I'm like, okay, now I need someone to explain this to me. So, you know, you know, it's yeah, it's it's different for each of us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, 
like the the transition point I think we can have here is that you know what is I think one culture within pharmacy school do you think makes pharmacy students struggle the most because you just address like everyone have different needs or everyone have their own mental struggles um in terms of like where they're in life um during pharmacy school or like maybe one just like clicks better with the knowledge and one just like struggles a little bit more um like but can you find like in like general like a culture around um pharmacy school that like most pharmacy students have been struggling with I believe, in my opinion, that most pharmacy students struggle with the understanding that we are all, a, we're a team, you know, that we cannot get through this alone. I tried to get through it alone my P1 year. I'm like, I could study by myself. I could do this by myself. And it it was terrible. The experience was was horrible. But I think, uh, I think in general, pharmacy students um, struggle with understanding that there are people there to help you. You just have to find, you have to find your group of people that you could adapt to and you could uh, naturally, you know, who naturally, who, who understands what you're going through at, at your level, you know? So uh, I think, for instance, for example, my one, my one thing that I struggled with was that I used to study with a group of kids who just naturally understood everything like so quickly and they, they understand it so fast. And I was left feeling like, Oh my gosh, I am not supposed to be here. Um, I am not that smart. Like, Oh my, like I have to, sometimes I have to, I would fail Friday and then I have to take it Monday. And luckily I passed that Monday, but you know, the people who I studied with took it Friday and they passed that Friday and so, you know, I was like, okay, you know, they're, they're, they're a nice group of students and they're willing to help, but my level of understanding is not at that level, you know? So, you know, I stopped studying with them and we still remained friends. And then, but then I found my other group of people who were, who did, who was on the same level as me struggling, you know, who was like, okay. But when we all got together, when we all found each other and we understand each other's weaknesses, we built on that and then P2 year, we became the students who very rarely had to reassess, you know, because we found each other and then we understood how, oh, I know if I don't get it, I know this, this person, you know, understands it really well. And she may not understand something really well, but I do. So, you know, that's, you know, that's how we figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like, you know, being around the right peers and like the mutual support among each other, right? Uh, I think that's certainly very important in terms of how do like one maybe goes through like pharmacy school. Like um, I know it's probably, I, I haven't gone through myself, but like I heard a lot of stories saying like, you know, it's hard. Like if you just go for by yourself, you want to make sure that your cohort's there um, and try to create like a holistic environment or, or a comfortable one so that everyone's like fine with each other and like making sure that everyone's here to grow and try to become a pharmacist. Um, that's all the things I hear myself, but I think that's, um, I can relate that to what you're saying as well, Shandika. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. You know, even being able to understand like the culture within pharmacy schools that maybe people struggle with, you know, have you been able to observe the consequences, like example, burnouts or some of these stresses, uh, that came from school. Um, so I'm sorry. So what was your question? How to deal with the burnouts? Yeah. So it's more like, um, have you able to observe like, like things that, um, maybe like gone worse in terms of like someone's uh, mental health, um, awareness or like things that they had, they just struggled more, but they didn't let's just say they didn't share it out, they didn't, like, talk it out, or things that, um, like, they just, like, make them not being in the same place as, like, other people, like, so, so they're not being mentally well, that's what I'm trying to mean, like, how you may observe, like, stressors or things like that, that ultimately, like, um, maybe not help students around you, uh, maybe they, they, maybe they decided to drop out or something okay. like that? Okay, yes, um, so there were, there were um, students who dropped out P1 year and P2 year. 
um, due to those stressors. There were people who dropped out P1 year because they didn't realize that you had to get a 90% on your exams in order to, you know, go on to the next class. And people dropped out mainly on that. We had people who dropped out based, um, based on the cultural uh differences not with not within the university um itself but with um like a bear uh language barrier so we had kids who were super smart i know i remember i had this one kid who was super smart in my group because sometimes we have to take our um after we take our exam solo we have to take it with a team um and so this kid was super smart but the kid couldn't um his language barrier was not there when it came to P2 year. And so he didn't know how to verbally counsel patients and um, basically break stuff down. Like, but on paper, he's a, he's a genius, you know? And so I think that, you know, understanding that, you know, you do have to talk to these patients. You can't just be smart on paper. You have to have a personality and be social and, you know, have those factors in there. Um, I've seen other students who struggled, struggled and then relied on medications to fix that. And, you know, that's to each his own. And, you know, that's that's how they do it. They saw a therapist and they got prescribed certain medications to help them deal with it um, when it when it came to their mental stabilities. Then you have students like me who just sat there and cried it out. Um, and, um, I might need, might need therapy after it, but you know, therapy is there. Um, but you know, so, you know, it's just different. Everyone, like I said, everyone deals with it differently. You have students who, who would literally sit there and cry the entire time they're taking the exam. And, and, you know, you, I asked, I saw one of my peers doing that and, you know, afterwards I asked him, I'm like, you know, are you okay? Like, everything is going to be okay. Are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. And, you know, he didn't talk to me much about it. He didn't talk to me at all about it. But just to know, I guess I just wanted to make sure that he was fine, that someone cared, you know, and that he wasn't in, you know, in it by himself. And so, and so you have, yeah, I mean, you see a lot of, a lot of people going through it in many different ways. And it's scary because you're like, oh my gosh, like, should I be on medication? Or, oh my gosh, should I drop out? Like, what is, like, you know, but you have to remind yourself and put those thoughts back in and be like, you know, you are your own person at the end of the day. Yes, this is supposed to be a team effort. We want everyone to make it and graduate, but you cannot come sit there and compare yourself to what other people's stressors are because that's just going to drive you crazy. Yeah, I can definitely, like, re- um, see that in terms of, like, uh, everyone have their own way to, you know, deal with their stress. Um, even like for people who are seeking like medications to support, right? They're seeking help at least, you know, they're there to hopefully hope can drive through this program together and just keep themselves together um, to at least there's a way that they deal with it. I think that's a very positive thing, actually, um, you know, and, you know, everyone do with again everyone do with stressors differently so i can really respect the people who like you know just take a different route and hope hope um to make sure that they're um they're well um mentally as well as maybe physically as well just to eat sleep you know um that has a, a drastic effect in terms of your mental health being as well so yeah, I can definitely see that, and thanks for sharing that, Shanika. Uh, I think that's very insightful in terms of like how people do with stress like differently, um, or things like you know even if they have a necessity to drop out because they weren't sure about whether they can finish the program. Hey, at least it's for themselves. Like you know they made the decision to um to you know uh may maybe they they just didn't find like uh, pharmacy the right path for them and i'm sure that they they will be able to find somewhere that's the right path for them because how else did it get initially like accepted you know like they have the skills and talents like the person you just said like you know um they might just like struggle a bit with language barrier and i'm sure that there are other places for uh for them to grow as well so um yeah um i guess one of the last questions, I think, I know you kind of shared a little bit in the beginning, like how do you cope with stress in general? Like you say workout and stuff. Um, how about your peers? Have you heard like your peers like use like kind of different methods? Um, maybe outside of like, you know, your, your normal session, like, like therapy 
or like uh, other mental health workshops, but like things that like they just do it for enjoyment. Um, sleep. We realized um, some of us were pulling all nighters our P one year, and you know, it it got to a point where we're like, okay, let's just see what happens if we actually go to bed on time, not get behind in our studies go to bed on time the night before the exam and then wake up and take the exam. And surprisingly, it worked because you end up passing Friday on the first try. And it's like, what in the world? Like, how does that even happen? When I did all nighters, I came to, you know, take the test and I failed it. And it was like, but I mean, and our professors preach this religiously, get sleep, rest, go to bed, Stop trying to pull on nighters. It's not going to work. And then, you know, like they tell us this and we were like, yeah, whatever. You're not dealing with this right now. Like you didn't go to a three-year program. Where are you doing to a four-year program? This is a three-year program. Like we know what we're doing. In all actuality, we did not know what we were doing. And the professors were right. Get some sleep. Um, We also realized that to stop filling our body with junk food and energy drinks and stuff, you know, some of us have to do it. Okay. But, you know, be in moderation, you know, take care of your body and your mind will take care of you, you know, like, so eating healthy, staying hydrated. Um, me and a group of friends, every, every time um, we go through a lecture, um, when the professor would be like, okay, let's have a 10 minute break. We would get up and walk around walk around the school, walk around outside and then come back before that 10 minute break is over. And it got us, you know, our vitamin D got our steps in. We used to go on little hikes. We had like a little hike trail behind our school. We used to go on little hikes after we ate lunch and, you know, just talk about stuff that was not school. It was very important to understand that everything that you talk about does not have to be about school. It's just going to drive you crazy, you know? Talk about talk about school when you're studying. Talk about school, you know, after the prof- after at the end of the day when the professor pr- professor finished teaching his lesson, you know. But you have to understand that your mentality really depend your your mental really depends on stuff that has nothing to do with school. Understanding that, do not compare yourself to your peers. You have your peers. You have your friends who you know, who don't struggle. And it's very important to understand that you do, you are not to, you're not there to impress your friends or your peers. You're there to graduate pharmacy school and become the best pharmacist you can be, you know, and, you know, you have to under, once you understand that you, you, this, you, people, I feel like we tend to put ourselves in an environment mentally, we think it's competitive, you know, you're like, you're mentally competing with everyone. And it's like, why are you doing that? Everyone has one goal and that's to graduate, especially at our school where there's no ladder system of who's top of the class. We don't do that there because everyone has to get a 90%. So technically everyone has a 4.0, but naturally we still try to compare ourselves and be like, I want to be the top of my class. There is no top of the class there. And so, you know, just dealing with that and, you know, um, journaling, going to church or studying your religious beliefs, just just understanding that pharmacy school, yes, you are going through pharmacy school right now, but pharmacy school is not your entire life. And learning how to separate that, you know, and learning how to be like, there's a time for pharmacy school and there's a time to do what I want to do and take care of myself. You know, so just understanding the importance in that. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's very important that I didn't realize when I first started undergrad because school was my life and I do everything like and it's just like sometimes it takes too much. And going back, like, you know, sleeping, how important it is, like, I can say that I cannot pull all-nighters anymore. <laughs> it's just like, I think it works, again, it works way much better when you're like actually like having be able to like sleep and then like go f- or even go through the material just one more time in the morning, then rather than pulling an all-nighter is like a way better option in general, I believe as well. Uh, and yeah, it's nice to see that you guys also have like some extra activities like um, that you guys can do, like just like take a little hike, a little walk, like, you know, just like not talk about school, you know. 
um I think that's like the, one of the most important yes parts. for sure just understanding how to separate the two you're in pharmacy school you are not pharmacy school if that makes sense you know like just yeah quote of the day yes <laughs> you are in pharmacy school you are not pharmacy school so you know just just make sure that you understand that and it's honestly it's easier said than done like I said, I did not figure this out until my P2 year, in the middle of my P2 year, once I'm like, okay, you know, because it, my, like, basically, like, I was over the edge of, like, okay, this, something has to give, something has to give, I cannot keep going through like this, your brain is like, you need to do something to fix this, like, stop trying to control everything you cannot stop comparing yourself to people you are not them you do not have, you don't know their life they do not know your life you know and it's yeah it's it's like i said as you go through it you'll you'll start to understand and sometimes some people catch it their p1 year some people you know fix that fix that problem really fast and then some people you know just like they don't want to trust the process. They don't like me. I was like, I'm not trusting the process. I don't trust anything. Like, I don't know when it's my time to leave. Will I be the next student to go? And, you know, it's like, okay, stop. Just stop it. You know? And so, like, yeah, you'll see. You'll see. So to conclude our first episode, any words of advice for our pharmacy students who are watching to address stress or burnout while in school? Yes. Words of advice would be, this is not, pharmacy school is not permanent. Um, you will get through it. You will make it. And you will become the best pharmacist that you ever could dream of. You know, um, take care of yourself mentally and physically. And you, you, have, you have to understand that you are in a healthcare field to take care of patients. But you can't do that if you don't take care of yourself first. Um, you have to understand that, you know, patients rely on us, but you also have to rely on yourself mentally and physically. Take those breaks. Don't feel bad for taking a break. Um, your body and your, your brain needs that. Um, you know, make sure you uh, form those relationships within your class because pharmacy, the pharmacy world is very small. So don't burn bridges, um, you know, just try to get as many connections because you never know who, who will be in that position that was in your class that you want to be in that position with them as well. And they could help you get, get in there and never forget, um, people will always remember how you made them feel. Um, if you, if they, if you, if you're, if someone ever brings up your name, and they might not know you, but they, you know, they might not know anything about you, but they will remember how you made them feel. Um, and so just be kind to others, be nice, um, help, help any, help everyone in your class, even though you don't talk to them, you know, on a regular basis, or you don't even know that person name, just be like, Hey, you want these notes? Like, I feel really confident in these notes and I think they're pretty legit. I'll, what's your email? I'll send them to you. You know, you can look them over. If you find any mistakes, just let me know. And, you know, it doesn't have to be with people who you talk to every day. Like I said, um, it could just be just you being a good person because you have to understand that you're going to be a healthcare provider and being a good person doesn't just come with being a good person or a provider to patients. It's being a good pers person in general um, to everyone. You know, you are that example. You're going to be you're a professional in your field. You have the highest degree in that field that anyone could get. And you have to wear that, wear that with pride and understand that comes with not just, you know, solving, solving uh, cases fast as you can, or, you, you know, you're someone who knows everything, knows it through, you know, all the books, you know, you could take a test and pass it. You just have to understand that you have to apply that outside of pharmacy as well. You know, and that's the biggest advice I have, especially mental health. If you struggle with your mental health, seek help. There is help. Your school should have resources. Speak to counselors, speak to therapists. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you know, speak to your peers, you know, find someone who is very confidential in what you're telling them and, 
you know, it's okay. Everyone, all of us have those mental struggles. I firmly believe that all of us do. We just, you know, go about it differently. Some of us hide it. Some of us are more open to talk about it. And that's okay. Um, like Ryan said previously in the beginning, there, there are resources out there and use them. Do not be ashamed about using them. Just use it. You know, you're the one going through it. Don't, you know, if you feel like, you know, your parents are going to judge you about it, don't tell your parents about you going through mental health because these therapists and these counselors, they're not, they're not obligated or supposed to tell your parents that, that you're seeking help, you know, it's HIPAA violation, to be honest. So, you know, just seek help if you need it. Don't be ashamed of it. We're all human. All right. Thanks for the great conclusion, Sunika. To our viewers, hit the like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below on things that we have done well and things that we can improve on. Click the subscribe button and the notification bell on our latest contents. Uh, go give us also a follow on our Instagram and Twitter to show us your support. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next episode where I'll be speaking with a practicing psychiatric pharmacist on uh, her how her practice looks like. Thank you. Bye-bye.